today we're driving the all new 2021 Cadillac Escalade. This is the Sport Platinum, so it has a starting MSRP of $103,000. This one is 112 grand, so we've got a few options in this. There's a lot to talk about in this new Escalade, so let's just get right into it. It's powered by a 420 horsepower, 6.2 liter V8, and that's mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. Pretty standard and traditional powertrain for the Escalade. It's absolutely massive. Of course, it's based on a Chevy Tahoe, but we've got new bumpers, lots of styling elements in the front end. We've got these new DRLs, these very slim, sharp looking headlights, 22 inch wheels. I think it's pretty good looking. It's very slab like. On the rear tailgate, you've got the option to just pop the rear window, which is nice if you just need to quickly grab something. And to open up the entire door, you just press the Cadillac logo. We finally have some more room behind the third row seats in this new 2021 Escalade, which is a definitely a welcome addition. Fold down the rear seat, you have to hold the button, and you get a lot of room behind the second row. There we go. Yeah, not the most quality feeling mechanisms, but it gets the job done. Lots of space, lots of room, and of course you can easily fold the second row seats down with this button as well. Kind of. There we go. As you can see, lots of space. That's what the Escalade is all about. If you need big body luxury and lots of room, this one will do it. You can fold down these seats very easily. You just press this button twice. There we go. Yeah, pretty clumsy mechanisms. Not too impressed with that, but that's okay. And then of course, in the third row, you've actually got a usable amount of space to sit in this thing. You can see there, that's about the legroom you have. Easily fold up the second row to get out. There we go. Ah, yep. And then you can get plenty of legroom in the second row by, by moving that seat back. Cadillac claims that they have the biggest rear infotainment screens on the market. You can send the front driver navigation settings. You can plug in all sorts of different things into these ports. You've got two HDMI ports, USB ports, cup holders, rear climate control. You can plug in the headphones, listen to some music. Check out Charlie's video on Daily Motor for what those sound like on the binaural microphones. Massive panoramic sunroof. And look at this new dashboard. This looks really sharp in my opinion, inside and out. The materials, the fit, the finish, the feel, the quality of everything is kind of typical GM Cadillac. It looks nice, feels kind of cheap, but that's nothing new. Pretty much the same story there. We've got a heated steering wheel, lots of steering wheel controls that are quite nice. Something that's a bit strange is there's a blank button here, but it has a cool little graphic in it. So I'm not sure if they'll make that something in the future. Very familiar switch gear uh, for GM products. It's the same shifter out of the Chevy Bolt. Um, in a $100,000 car, all this stuff looks and feels really cheap. The climate control buttons though are very nice and the screen design looks very nice. So if you can get over the uh, just the plasticky feel of these buttons, um, the rest of it looks and feels pretty nice. We've got a couple of cup holders in there, USB ports, and then a refrigerator, literally a refrigerator in the center console. Pretty neat. In the center here, we've got a pretty nice solution for wireless charging. Just stick your phone right in there and it'll charge, which is great. Connect Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay is a little bit strange in how it integrates into the screen because it is this shape. It doesn't quite look that great. It's just kind of a square there and there isn't anything to fill in the negative space, which is kind of strange. But this infotainment, 
the the touch screen especially when you first start with a vehicle is very buggy um, sometimes menus won't even load sometimes they'll take forever to load the scroll wheel lacks accuracy it feels kind of cheap um, not sold on this infotainment some people have reported they really like it I have not been impressed with this particular car it's been very buggy for me and very difficult to get things um, the UI is is kind of all over the place we have a 36 speaker sound system in this by AKG which really bumps we're gonna do a sound system test at the end of this video and the, it's incredibly powerful the um, the clarity isn't quite there it's very bass heavy but it's a very impressive system, especially at high volume. Um, so pretty interesting there too. We can customize a lot of different things on these screens and on these menus, as I'm sure you can imagine. We've got this little screen to the left here that shows your, your trip one, your trip two. You can go in and select your center gauge, whether you want the digital gauge cluster, your GPS, your augmented reality camera, which shows uh, arrows on the road to kind of point you in the direction that you need to go when you need to turn using the navigation and of course the night vision camera which only works in the nighttime this digital gauge cluster is nice it shows you a lot of information you can customize what is shown on the left or what is shown on the right but i don't think it's really that it doesn't match the uh, attractive design of the rest of the interior it looks just kind of put there so kind of uh a little bit of an inconsistency there, in my opinion. All right, let's take this new Escalade for a drive and see what it's like on the road. Got a nice reverse camera, 360. You can change your settings here, see various different parameters, and that is a good thing because the visibility on the outside of this Escalade is, uh, is pretty challenging. This thing is so big and the hood is so high that you really do have uh, limiting sight lines around you. This is a difficult vehicle to park and navigate around uh, tight situations in the city. See there we've got moving lines. The shifter does get a little bit confusing because you have to press the button for reverse uh, but not in drive. And as soon as you get started the seatbelt gives you a little bit of a tug and you are off. Super smooth powertrain, this 10 speed is very nicely tuned. GM always does a really good job with their 10 speed automatics. And uh, this is just further refined. This new Escalade does ride on air suspension. You have three different height modes. There's access height, which makes this pretty easy to get in and out of. There's off-road mode at the max, where it really lifts, lifts up the suspension, gets you some extra ground clearance. This has selectable four-wheel drive, auto, too high, too low, off-road modes, all that good stuff. Since most Escalades won't really see off-road scenarios, we're just gonna kinda mall crawl on this today. There are some rough drivetrain shifts when you're coming down from speed to a stop, but otherwise, this 10 speed is pretty refined. And the 6.2 V8 sounds quite good. It does sound a little bit different this year. I think they had to do some changes to it for cylinder deactivation. So it isn't as maybe throaty as it used to be, but it's still a V8. It sounds good, especially under full throttle. One thing that's kind of strange is that these paddle shifters don't work until you put it into L mode, and uh, then you have control over your gears. Kind of silly in my opinion. You should be able to just use those in drive. Nice to be able to drop a couple gears every now and then if you need to make a pass or do whatever. We have auto stop start. You can turn that off in the center here. Seems to work pretty well. Very close gear spacing. Good for fuel economy, good for performance. It does offer a pretty smooth experience accelerating too. And finally, we get independent rear suspension in this Escalade. 
ride quality is fantastic. We have magnetic dampers. Combine that with the air suspension. The tuning of the suspension, the ride quality, the handling is all very well done. Dynamically, I do like the way this Escalade drives. It's come a long way since the last generation. It still feels truck-like. You still know that you're in a body-on-frame SUV, but it's much more refined. Getting on the highway here, we have radar-guided cruise control. No Super Cruise in this Escalade, unfortunately. That is coming later this year. But you can easily skip five mile an hour increments with a button on the left here. The lane keep assist is not a very good system. It basically just kind of bounces you off both lines. Um, feels pretty dated, feels pretty rudimentary. The radar cruise is okay, but again, it's a little bit of an old school feeling system in that it just doesn't quite smooth out those speed differentials. It's pretty heavy on the brakes sometimes. It's kind of a rough driving system. And if you have a lot of passengers in your Escalade, uh, they're probably not gonna appreciate radar guided cruise. Luckily, you can use traditional cruise control, but in a $112,000 car, nah, it's not great. I'm not sold on the cruise control system that comes standard in this Escalade. Uh, if I were to get this, I would go for Super Cruise, and uh, that would kind of make this feel just that much more special and that much more modern. Don't really have any complaints about this dynamically. Brake pedal feel is nice. Uh, could go do with a little bit more bite maybe, but the suspension, the drivetrain, everything drives really well with this new Escalade. It's a very refined experience as you would expect. Um, nothing revolutionary here, but just kind of a, a good improvement over previous Escalades. Over rough pavement, we are getting some creaks and rattles throughout the interior from the seats, from the door sills, from the window frames. Very nice handling though. And it has completely locked me out from accelerating around this corner. Thinks that I'm about to hit something. There we go. Oh, all right. Nice acceleration, but that was really weird back on that entrance ramp. It completely cut my throttle because I was cornering really fast and the pre-collision braking symbol came up. That was weird. So I guess the Escalade will not let you corner quickly or hustle around a back road. It'll just stand on the brakes. I'll be honest, guys. I am pretty disappointed with this new Escalade. It's gotten a lot of hype. It's gotten a lot of praise. Uh, after living with it for a few days, I just don't see the value in here. For $112,000, it feels like I've gussied up Tahoe, and that's pretty much what it is. Um, you know, if you want to spend six figures for a few extra screens and uh, a nicer dashboard and interior, go for it. But there isn't anything that is worthy of the six-figure price tag here. If it had Super Cruise, I would say, okay, maybe this is a vehicle that can kind of bring us into the modern era and, and offer something that competitors don't have. Uh, but we did have the Lincoln Navigator a few weeks ago, and that was that was pretty impressive. That was a nice SUV. Definitely not my first choice in the segment, but I would 100% pick that over this. It's just a little bit more impressive. It feels a little bit more higher quality. Uh, you still have some GM interior interior bits from base model cars in this $100,000 Escalade, and I think at this price point, that's I don't know. That's asking a little bit too much. It's it feels like a money grab in uh, at this price point. So my thoughts after driving this for a few days, I, I think it's impractical in how big it is. If you're going to be using this as a daily driver, it's just too big to take into the city. Um, it's very difficult to park. It's very difficult to navigate around tight spaces. If you ever hit a pedestrian in this thing, they'd be dead. <laughs> so... It's just so massive. Let's see how it does around another corner here. There we go. It handles well. 
for how big it is. All right, let's go in. I think we've pretty much covered this. A lot of complaints on this Escalade. I'll be honest, I'm not being kind to this. And uh, if it were 70 grand, it'd be okay. It'd be all right, you know, it, it, this is fine. But for a hundred thousand bucks, get an X7, get a GLS Mercedes. Let's go in and listen to some music. The sound system is impressive and that is one redeeming factor with this new Escalade. AKG sound system is impressive and honestly it's probably close to being class leading in this segment. So that is one redeeming factor with this Escalade is this 36 speaker system is really quite impressive. It's super loud, it's a little bit bass heavy but you can kind of adjust things a little bit and if you have a nice quality audio source it sounds really good. With a uh, Bluetooth connection with some satellite radio stations it doesn't sound that great but again that's kind of up the, to the audio source. I'm not really seeing anything revolutionary here. Uh, the design looks good, it's, it's nice enough, but I feel like Cadillac went a little bit conservative with this new Escalade. And uh, if they really wanted this to be kind of class leading American luxury, I feel like there's more that they could have done. I mean, look at this plastic here, down on the side sills. No, this just doesn't feel and look like a $112,000 car. So kind of a disappointment. Um, let me know your guys' thoughts. I'm curious to see what you think about the new Escalade. A lot of people have been excited about this coming out for the 21 model year. And uh, yeah, I wish there was just more here that really was exciting to talk about. And it is a nice driving vehicle, but no hybrid powertrain, no electric powertrain yet. It's uh, kind of the same story as usual, so. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the new Escalade. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, we'll be bringing some more vehicles to you next week. If you want, follow me on Instagram at thetofer2. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.